wanna go and party she wanna go and party nigga don't approach her with that adore it nigga that nigga game on me sorry they say conversation rule a nation i can tell but i could never write my wrongs unless i write it down for real P.S. Like, but goddamn, you gotta just it. I mean, I write poems in these songs. Hello baby loves. So today I'm coming back with another chit chat get ready with me video. You guys seem to really enjoy the last get ready with me video I posted so I thought why the hell not? Let's go ahead and just keep the ball rolling and post another one. Um, today I'm going to be doing a neutral eye bold look. Neutral eye bold lip look. There you go. <laughs> so to prime my face, I'm going to be using the Wet n Wild Photo Focus Face Primer as per usual. So the first order of business is... Um, let's talk about womanism. Because I've been getting a lot of questions about that on Twitter and in my curious ass. But I've been getting questions about what exactly is womanism and who can be a womanist and so on, so on and so forth and its relation to black feminism. Um, for foundation, I'm going to be using the Maybelline Fit Me Dewy Finish Foundation in the color 355, like as per usual. I usually use the same makeup products to be honest with y'all. I don't have an extensive makeup collection. I have one foundation, one primer. A couple of eyeshadow palettes like it's not that extensive and I'm gonna be using that dupe opal whatever you know those type of brushes I'm using the dupe again and again I'm sorry it's dirty but yeah in short <laughs> womanism is an ideology ideology that um, examines how race gender class sexuality and all these different facets of life impact black women specifically and the ideology or the term the coin the, the word womanist was coined by Alice Walker and you are probably familiar with Alice Walker if you are familiar with the color purple seeing as she wrote the book oh my God. <laughs> it is very similar to black feminism it's extremely similar uh, some people consider it to be interchangeable in terms of like you know Womanist and black feminist is the same thing, so they're interchangeable. While some argue that they're not and that they are they have their differences. Now, me myself personally, when I was like, you know, when I I was introduced to womanism through Twitter. Um, <laughs> you know, sorry, I wish I had a more scholarly answer, but yeah, I came across womanism on Twitter because. I would notice that some women, some black women would have it in their bios, but it didn't occur to me that it was a specific thing to black women. I thought it was just another word for feminist. And you know, this is before I identify as a feminist, so this is when I'm just happening upon this community. And I was like, what the heck is a womanist? Like, and so I just googled it randomly, and when I read about it, I was like, yo, this is lit. <laughs> like, we, we have our own shit. That's really dope. But, um... That's how I came across womanism, and it's funny because black feminists usually are the ones who are saying like womanism is interchangeable with you know black feminism, and womanists are you know who are who are like nah call me a womanist not a black feminist type of womanist they they are the ones who say that there is a vast difference between womanism and black feminism. Now I guess you're wondering how do you feel about this day offer? Um. <laughs> To be honest, I go back and forth between it because I can understand both sides. I can understand why someone would think that, you know, womanism and black feminism are interchangeable. And I can also understand people who feel that there are a lot of differences. So for concealer, I'm going to be using the NARS Radiant Creamy Concealer in the color Amande. And I'm going to be putting that under my eyes. So, yeah, I can understand why some people may feel that it's, they're similar because if you break it down to the core both of them specifically like specifically <laughs> I can never say that word I'm definitely one of those people who are like specifically but you know I'm trying to work on myself but I can definitely understand why someone would feel that black feminism and womanism are similar because they both focus on black women like 
they both hone in on the experiences of black women. They both analyze the experiences of black women. They both study how racism and sexism together impact black women in our lives. So, I mean, it's a strong argument that they could be interchangeable because even in the definition that Alice Walker provides for womanism, she literally says, a black feminist or a feminist of color, if I remember correctly. But feminist was definitely in her definition of womanist. So, I mean, I mean, you could argue that they are interchangeable. Now, for people who say that they're different, the reason why they say that, some of the reasons are kind of a historical. <laughs> and other reasons are pretty valid. For example, one valid reason is... Um, they say like black feminism primarily focuses on um, black American women and womanism focuses on or has the ability to focus on black women in the entire African diaspora. So I'm going to be using LA Girl Pro Conceal in the color Warm Hunting to highlight the center of my face. Some people argue that non-black women of color can be womanist because white feminism excludes them as well and they need a space to you know you know examine their own experiences within an ideology so some people do argue that non-black women of color can be womanist hmm. <laughs> so I'm using the LA girl translucent powder like I did in the other video to set my under eye Womanism is very, it just focuses so much on black women that it's just so hard to try and make space for people who aren't black women. I mean, <laughs> to me, it's, in, it's invasive because womanism primarily was about black women. It started by black women for black women, so I don't understand why we need to make space for people who aren't black women in womanism, especially because black women ourselves we have a very unique experience even even unique to like non-black women of color experiences yes we have similarities like yes we both deal with racism and sexism but for black women it's it's very unique because you also got to think about non-black women of color and non-black people of color in general are notoriously anti-black meaning their communities aren't exactly that welcoming to black people. Like, they don't necessarily think we're all that great. So, considering that, non-black women of color also exclude black women. Black women are very vulnerable to racial and sexual violence. So why in the world do I have to make space for somebody who also excludes me just because they're excluded by white women my whole thing is like why don't you want to create your own thing <laughs> like instead of like hijacking someone else's shit why wouldn't you want to be like you know what that's inspiring that black women have made their own space for themselves let's do that for ourselves <laughs> like i don't understand as far as i know there are different like smaller ideologies for other non-black women of color and I cannot think of the names off the top of my head but if I do I'll either like you know caption it or put it in the description box below but for the most part I just don't understand why I would have to make room for non-black women of color and womanism when womanism specifically analyzes the experiences of black women so people were kind of upset that I openly said, like, you know, why, you know, because what happened was this uh, non-black Asian woman on Twitter, she was, like, talking down about African vernacular English, African American vernacular English, and, you know, I don't know, she's just making fun of it. And um, I remembered, like, a day or so before she had announced to the TL that she was a womanist, so I was like, wait. Because I saw in the comments that people were saying like, oh, non-black people of color are so anti-black to her jokes about, you know, African-American vernacular English. And I was like, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. <laughs> is she not black? And she's calling herself a womanist? So I openly said, I was like, I openly asked her, I was like, how are you not black and you're calling yourself a womanist? And some non-black women 
felt some type of way about what I said. And I'm just like, if you actually knew the history of womanism, you wouldn't feel some type of way. You would actually agree with me. <laughs> you would be like, yeah, that is weird. Why is she? <laughs> Especially her being Asian because Asians are, woo, girl. Woo. Mm. <laughs> Asians are real, 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 real bad with anti-blackness. <laughs> so I'm just like, and as, you know, and her making fun of how black people talk, is an example of that so I was like um what you're not about to do is one call yourself a womanist and then two be anti-black as you doing it like what girl get it together so I was like no ma'am that's not how we roll <laughs> so that's what prompted this whole conversation about womanism and people were like how you know how can you say non-black women can't be womanists and blah 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 Speaking of white feminists and stuff, and now I'm going to be using um, Morphe 350 palette again to contour, and I'm going to be using these two shades, boop, boop, together to contour. Um, but speaking of white feminists <laughs> and, you know, women of color and black women and whatnot, uh... So this shit with Beyonce. <laughs> so if you don't know, which I would be surprised if you just didn't know at this point, Beyonce announced that her children, her twins, Sir and Rumi, have been born. And so she posted this picture of her with her twins. And it's a beautiful, elaborate, dramatic, avant-garde picture of her and her babies. And so that was her way of announcing that, you know, Hi guys, they are born. <laughs> um, celebrate with me as I bring new life into the world. Of course, white women were showing their entire asses with this whole situation. They were like, oh my god, Beyonce is so cocky. She's so full of herself. I don't understand why she has to do all that. Like, why does she have to have such elaborate, egotistical pictures? Like, okay, everyone can have kids. And so I don't know why it's so special that Beyonce has kids. And oh my god, oh my god. I'm just like, bitch, who hurt you? Why are you so mad that Beyonce announced her pregnancy? One. And then two, why are you mad that she did it? in an avant-garde way like who cares like who cares like they just feel so threatened when black women are the center of attention for once and it also has to do with the fact that people get really uncomfortable when black women exhibit any type of joy or happiness and the reason why is kind of complex and I'm not about to break it all the way down in this makeup video but the reason why is because like for the longest time, black women have been typecasted as angry, bitter, we are jealous, and all these negative stereotypes about black women. We're just all around bitter ass and Nancy, negative ass Nancys. And so when we show anything that's opposite <laughs> of that narrative, the opposite of what people have been conditioned to associate with black women, people try to rationalize it like, why why are y'all so happy you know like what what's going on and then when they see us being happy they have this like subconscious <laughs> reaction to antagonize it and to sabotage that happiness now people always say i'm being dramatic <laughs> when i bring this up you know and other black feminists and women have brought this up too that people are oddly enough just so threatened by uh black women's happiness People are like, no one gives a fuck about y'all damn happiness. <laughs> We're not bothered, bitch. But every time black women are happy, y'all are real hot and bothered. Like, first of all, people are already hot and bothered with women just in general show any sign of enjoying anything. I mean, look at what men do. They call men, they call women hoes whenever we enjoy something. Oh my god, girls who use a Snapchat filter are hoes. Oh my god, girls who wear leggings are hoes. Girls who breathe are hoes. Girls who part their hair to the right or hose like not my problem anyways i'm gonna use this color right here as the transition shade shade and i'm gonna be using a fluffy brush to put it in my crease people have been acting a fool <laughs> with this whole beyonce thing 
You know what else people have been acting a fool about? R. Kelly. Um, so if you weren't aware, BuzzFeed did a report that R. Kelly has been holding women, young black women in particular, um, hostage at his various locations um, in Atlanta and Chicago. And what I mean hostage meaning like they cannot leave his property without his permission. They have to, he regulates what they eat, what they wear, where they go. He regulates every aspect of their lives. Like they, he alienated them from their friends and family so bad that their friends and family have asked for like welfare checks and have like filed missing person reports. Like it is so bad. <laughs> the sad part about it is people have been just of course naturally as people naturally are have been real assholes about the situation like oh well they're grown like they're consenting to this so why is everyone mad at R. Kelly why are people calling him a rapist or whatever so on and so forth um I'm gonna take this color that was next to it this one and put it in the corner of my eyes and see what happens because mind you, these kids, these are like young teenage girls, by the way. These are um, like 18 year olds and some of them are like in their early 20s. So he's basically messing around with barely legal teenage girls. And people are like, well, technically, I mean, he's not doing nothing wrong because they're adults technically. And they're consenting, you know, to this technically. I'm like, what is consensual about someone regulating your fucking life? Like... I don't think that's consensual and then on top of that they said in the news report that um, if one of the women basically do anything without his permission or breathe without his permission he physically and verbally abuses them using them so <laughs> I don't know how I feel about this <laughs> we'll see we'll see where this goes I'm going to use um, this color right here to kind of like, mm, I guess, neutral, kind of tone down the darkness a little bit in the crease. A little bit. Let's see. No, I'm about to wipe this shit off. Try it again because it's not working. Nah. BRB. <laughs> okay, I'm back. So, I'm going to prime my eyes again with the LA Pro Concealer in the color Warm Honey. I'm going to try this one more time. <laughs> when it comes to R. Kelly, people really show their true colors and how they feel about teenage black girls and just black women in general. The reason why R. Kelly is targeting these girls is because he knows, <laughs> anyone who's aware knows that these type of girls, young black girls, are not protected like they should be. They're not valued, they're not respected as they should be because black women ourselves, just in general, we're not respected or valued or protected like we should be. So. You know, if you go after these type of girls, then yeah, of course, people are going to be passive about it. People are going to be complacent about it. People aren't going to care. They're just like, um, let's go back into this Jaclyn Hill palette. I'm going to be using this color, this one right here. I'm going to use that one on my lid. I'm going to put that on my lid and just see what happens. Okay. All right. And... To be frank with y'all, like to keep it real with y'all, and the black community, we tend to demonize young teenage black girls because of how they look. You know, when black teenage girls develop, you know, they, their hips start filling out, they start getting their curves, start growing up and stuff. Instead of like holding their hand through this transition from childhood to adult, like we should do as adults, we demonize them and call them fast. <laughs> and sexualize their bodies and make them feel essentially ashamed of their bodies they feel like they have to hide out in a corner somewhere so i mean when you create this culture within our own community 
what do you expect? Like, for example, when young black girls come to us, black adults, and tell us that they have been sexually abused, you know, or they've been, you know, uh, pursued, <laughs> when they've been pursued by older, you know, black men, we, instead of, you know, holding the man accountable, a grown man accountable for going after or praying after a young child, we then turn around and chastise her and call her fast and grown and call her a young thought. Are you serious right now? Like, are you serious? And then you want to act surprised when niggas like R. Kelly have a sex cult <laughs> of young black teenage girls and he hasn't faced any real repercussions for doing so? No, that's not how this works. So now I'm going to go into this Missy Lynn palette. This is an oldie. What a goodie. I'm pretty sure she doesn't sell this anymore. She made this with BH Cosmetics. But I'm going to go into this palette and I'm going to actually use, um, I'm going to use this color right here to blend it out and hope for the best. <laughs> ha ha. This looks better. So now I'm going to be using Roma London uh, Glam Eyes Liner like I did in the last video and I'm going to do a winged liner. I'm just really disappointed in how the R. Kelly situation is being handled. Like, people are not taking it seriously. People are making light of it as they've, like, always done in the past. Like, people have made jokes about R. Kelly having, you know, if it, having to be in trial because he had 14 charges of child pornography. Like, that's not funny. Like, none of this shit is funny. I don't understand why people trivialize that and then act surprised when R. Kelly has a sex cult where he sexually and physically and emotionally and verbally abuses these young women like after you know BuzzFeed did this report about R. Kelly um, TMZ interviewed one of the girls who were reportedly being held hostage by him and in the video too because uh, it appeared to be like a Skype video I guess you could say it looked like a Skype video that they were on but you know they're asking her like are you being held hostage uh, where are you? This, that, you know, just, you know, <laughs> basic questions. And she looks so nervous. Like, she was, sh she was kind of shaky. When they asked her, like, where are you? Like, where are you located? You can see on the shadow of her shirt, like, there's a shadow on her shirt. And it's like a hand doing this, like someone doing this. When they ask her, where are you at? And then she's like, oh, oh, oh I, I'm not, I can't speak on that. I'm not going to speak on that. What? Uh, <laughs> all right, y'all. Like, if you think that's normal, I don't know what to tell you because that screams I'm being held hostage and being held against my will to me. And now I'm taking these lashes from Ardell. Pretty sure these are the wispy lashes. I'm not entirely sure. Like, I'm pretty sure because I've had these for so long and I've lost the package that I came in. And I'm also going to be using Duo Eyelash Adhesive to put these on. R. Kelly, like, he orchestrated Aaliyah's whole AJ Nothing But an, A Number album. And it just coincidentally, he marries her when she's 15 years old and he's like 28. Are you still trying to tell me you can separate the art from the artist with R. Kelly? Really? Nah. <sighs> so, of course, my freaking camera died. But I gave it a little bit more juice, so I should be able to finish this video out. While it was charging, I went ahead and did my brows. And I already highlighted a little bit with the Wet n Wild Mega Glow Highlighting Powder and Crown of My Canopy. I'm just going to add just a wee bit more. I also went ahead and exfoliated my lips because I'm going to be doing a matte lip today. And one thing I have learned when it comes to makeup is do not do a matte lip, matte lip with dry lips because that's just going to be a hot, hot, hot mess. So anyways, I'm going to be using the Too Faced Melted Matte Lip Color in the color Wicked. This is what it looks like. Wanna go and party?
She wanna go and part it. Nigga don't approach her with that Atari. Nigga that ain't good game home is sorry. They say conversation, rule a nation. I can tell, but I could never write my wrongs unless I write it down for real. P.S. Life, but goddamn, you got adjust it. I mean, I write poems in these songs Dedicated to the fun sex Your natural hair and your soft skin And your big ass and that sundress Ooh. Good God, what you doing that walk for?